are doing a saltwater pool this year. So I've been looking online to find out more about the testing of the water and everything that we need to know. So I'm gonna share some things that I found helpful. The first thing we learned about saltwater pools is that it's not chlorine free because you use a chlorine generator that generates chlorine from the salt in the pool, but it's not the same as dumping chlorine into your pool. The chlorine levels are lower. Saltwater pools are more gentle on your skin and your eyes, on your hair, and then you don't have that strong chlorine smell when you get out of the pool. It can be beneficial for people with skin conditions and allergies to pool chemicals. Our personal experience with the saltwater pool has been so much better than the traditional chlorine pools. After you initially add salt to your water, you don't have to keep adding salt. The salt stays in the pool and then the chlorine generator splits the salt to release the chlorine. It does its job sanitizing the water and then it reverts back to salt and then the process is repeated. This process of saltwater chlorine generation does create a byproduct called sodium hydroxide which increases your pH level. pH is power of hydrogen, so it tells you how acidic or basic it is. So you wanna make sure that your water is safe to swim in. You need to keep it in the neutral zone between about 7.2 and 7.8. Since the pH is constantly rising with the generation of chlorine from the salt water, we check the pH every time before we swim to make sure it's neutral. And then a couple of times we've had to add muriatic acid which is the recommended acid to add to bring your pH back down into the safe level if it gets above the 7.8. You could also use pH decreaser, but we already have this on hand because Josh uses it for other things. I will admit that this sounded a little shocking to me to add muriatic acid, so I did search online if you could add, for example, vinegar to lower the pH, and the results were basically you could, but the amount that you'd have to add is so much that you'd be raising the sugar level of the pool and it would become food for microbes. So after adding the muriatic acid to bring the pH level down, we let it circulate through the filter. The only other things that I test the water for are the salt level to keep that within range to make sure there's enough salt for the chlorine to generate and then also not too much salt. And then the free chlorine amounts and lastly, phosphates, which was a little more tricky to read the results for with the test kit. That's when you have like the organic matter in your pool, bugs or leaves or just whatever that would raise the phosphates. The only phosphates test kit that I could find online was one where you have to look through the tube to compare the colors. I couldn't find a digital one. And so it was a little tricky to see what the level actually was. The recommended level that I can find online is between 100 and 125 parts per billion and once you start to get higher than 500 it's time, time to start treatment. So that's what I could find online. According to online, the signs of excess phosphates in your water is uh, cloudy green water, slippery slimy surfaces, mustard and green colored debris, excessive chemical consumption, poor water quality, and high phosphates can also weaken your chlorine. Okay, so this is the water right now, turning back to mostly clear. We had a, an issue to where it was turning green because we didn't get the levels or the settings right on our chlorinator, something like that. So it was turning green, our levels just weren't right yet. So we read that you could shock it, dumping chlorine in it just to get it started for the chlorinator to make its own chlorine from the salt or put like a pool shock tablet. I'm not sure which one Josh did, I think it was the pool shock. But then the water pretty quickly after that turned brown and that can happen when the chlorine reacts with the metals in the water, specifically iron in our water and oxidizes and so it turned brown. And then, so I ordered some metal out, iron out, but it didn't come in yet. And just running the filter, it actually turned clear again. So I think our filter is keeping up so far. So I'm gonna check the pH levels to make sure that it's the alkalinity and the pH are the right level and safe for the kids to swim. So two seconds in the water and check immediately. Actually, it's pretty pink, isn't it? That means that it, the pH is too high. So, uh, dad bought more muriatic acid. So we're just gonna dump that in and let the filter do its job and we'll check it again later and see how the levels are, okay? The water hardness is okay, it's good. The alkalinity is still too high. 
along with the pH. The free chlorine is still showing zero, so, but we haven't had the chlorinator in there. We took it out when it was storming, uh, lightning, the thunderstorm we had, and I just didn't put it back in yet, and plus we had added that shock, so. We went ahead and ordered a new skimmer because our one from last year was pretty nasty. So we're just now getting that on. So this blue thing just floats like this then? Sure. Oh my goodness. Sure. Okay. So now that's connected to this one, which runs to this, which goes through the filter then. What are you doing now? I'm going to aerial. Just because it sucked up. That's because you added the skimmer? Okay. So I just said that I thought this filter was working pretty well because it got the water clear again. But apparently this gauge isn't climbing when it's supposed to to show us when to, to backwash it and rinse it because Josh just did it before I had the camera over here. So I missed it, but um, it was very brown from I guess all the iron filtered out and the gauge looked just like this, like it did not need to be filtered. So that's kind of disappointing. But he did buy the sand already and we're gonna just go ahead and try these hoses uh, with our old larger sand filter we bought last year, which is the reason we didn't hook it up right away because we didn't have the new hoses for it. But we'll see if these hoses work. I found this product on Amazon to keep the phosphates in check at the level they need to be. And I just shook this and I'm gonna add a cap full to my skimmer once a week. A lot of June bugs right now. It's not bad at all. So here Josh just backwashed our sand filter. Uh, the only ones that you really have to use on here is of course the filter that you see it on, on play right now and then the backwash, which he just did, and then the little water drop one is the rinse one for when you need to rinse it out after a backwash. And the remaining three, closed, circulate, and drain, we haven't had to use. Okay, we decided to go ahead and get a digital tester because we just weren't sure if those strips were being uh, giving us accurate readings, so this is supposed to test the different things we need to know. Free chlorine. It's not registering any, but we don't have our um, chlorine generator in. I need to put that back in. pH 7.8, 7.9. And I learned that pH, the levels climb exponentially. And so it's a drastic change. Salt, okay, I think our salt is down to a good range now. Okay, do two cups. And Josh is going to add muriatic acid to bring the pH levels down. We're gonna let that filter through the water. Okay, so it's about three hours later since we added the muriatic acid to bring the pH down and have the filter on. And I'm checking the pool in different spots. And so far it's been about 7.2 to 7.4. So that is a safe swimming level. So Eli's been working really hard today fixing the chicken coop and he's begging me to go swimming right now so he can swim in the dark under the stars. So. We just went for a night swim and we're done. So I'm gonna get the chlorinator, the uh, saltwater chlorine generator back into the pool. It's looking kind of brown already. I don't know how it's supposed to look, but we probably only used it maybe a week if I had to guess. But 
Anyhow, you're supposed to take it out before you swim. And so I'm gonna put it back in, try to get it plugged in. Lastly, I wanted to mention about the free chlorine reading always being zero on my test strips and the digital. So I was looking into it online and then also the manual here for the chlorine generator. This manual says a reading of low or no chlorine is normal so long as the Megachlor CD starts generating chlorine within a few hours. So following the instructions here, I've been raising the zero point to be able to um, have it kick on at a lower level of chlorine. I also had been hitting the boost button which starts a chlorine cycle every time after we would swim and put the chlorine generator back in the pool. Our pool water has been staying nice and crystal clear uh, after we got all these other things figured out. Even so, I'm hoping I can get all these settings on the chlorinator figured out to where it can do its job and automatically detect the chlorine and then when I take a test of the water it'll show me a good reading of what the chlorine level is supposed to be instead of zero.